this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to build a Turbo iOS app. So to start off, I'm going to create a new Rails project. I'm going to call this Turbo Blog. And I'm not really going to pass anything else for right now. Now I'm going to go into that blog. And from here, I'm going to do a Rails G scaffold for a post. And post is going to have a title. It's also going to have a body. Uh, usually you'd have users, but I'm just going to keep it simple for now. So we're just going to have a post that you can post. So now that we have this, I'm going to... Let's just start up the server and see what we see. So let's run Rails S. Start the server. go we have to run the migration perfect so now we see the rail screen which means we have to update the routes so that it'll the default route will be set to that blog page so let's go into here open up go to the config routes.rb and here we define the resources for posts but we also want to set the root to post index action. We can refresh and we'll see that we're on the post page. We can create a new post and say title. This is the body. Uh, it looks like I made a mistake on the type of the field. So it's a text field instead of a, it's a string instead of a text to type column. We can fix this, but that's fine for now. It's not a problem. So now that we have this basic Rails app, I want to show it on the, I want to build the iOS app to, that shows this Rails app. I want to build a Turbo iOS app. So now that I have built the Rails portion, now I'm going to go and build the Turbo iOS portion in Xcode. So for that, you're going to need to have Xcode installed. And then we can go and create a new Xcode project. We're going to keep it as a type app. Let's add a product name. So I'm just going to call it Turbo Blog Project. And make sure that it's on Storyboard and the language is Swift. Now we can create this. And I'll set up the project from here. We have a whole app set up. So we have an app delegate, a scene delegate, and a view controller. And that's actually all we need for our Turbo app. The only thing is we need to replace the code in this scene delegate with the code for Turbo. So I have that right here. You can find it on in the docs of the Turbo iOS project on GitHub. But I'll walk you through the code real quick. It's pretty simple. So first thing, we're importing Turbo. So actually, we're getting a thing that says no such model Turbo. That's because we haven't added it to the app. So to do that, you can go click right here to the main app. And we need to add a dependency. So Okay, so we have to click, we have to make sure that we're not on target, we're actually on the project. And then we go to package dependencies. Right now there's none. And then we have to paste in the link to the Turbo iOS GitHub repository. That's the only way you can really get it to pop up. So yeah, you can either type this in GitHub slash hotwired slash Turbo iOS. I don't think they're gonna change this. Or you can just open up this repo, which I recommend so you can see the docs and if you want to look into the source code. So now we're going to add that as a package and now we're all set up. So with this new code, uh, let's take a look at what it does. So we have a variable window, which is a UI window. And this window is actually uh, the, well, just the window of the screen. We can take a look at that if we run the simulator. We're actually seeing an error. Let's see what that is. 
So signing requires a development team. So what this means is I set the team to none, but actually you want to set that to your account. Now when you first install Xcode, your account won't be configured. So you're going to want to click add an account and then, you know, type in your email and your password, get authorized. And then you can use this team. So now that I fixed that, we should be good to run the simulator. And here it's building. It looks like it's going to be successful. Uh, it's asking, okay, I'm going to type in my password. And there we go. The build was successful. Now we can pop open this simulator. Oh, whoops. It was trying to run it on my phone. So actually, just click up one of these phones to use. I'm going to use the iPhone 14 Pro Max. This is a pretty good one to test with because it's like the latest phone. So we open it up. Right now we don't see anything because we haven't set the URL actually. So let's go back to the scene delegate. See, it's trying to visit this, the Turbo Native demo. So actually it should work if we wait. Because it should visit that Turbo Native demo. Yep, it looks like it's loading. So there we go, it visited this page. We don't want it to visit there, but this is a good example of what you can get right away. All I did was replace it with this code. And if you see, there's not that much code. All there is is, you know, we're setting the window to the UI window. We have a navigation controller. What this is for is for saving history of navigation, because if you can see, we have this little back button here. And this is actually, on purpose to keep sort of history. See if we advance here, now we can go back to the back page, but if we do a replace and we go back, it should just bring us, I mean, okay. It looks like, it looks like that's not working properly, but maybe I'm doing something wrong. Anyways, let's switch this out to the local link. So localhost 3000 is where our server is running locally. And then let's rebuild this app. And as you can see, now we have that index page and already it's working right out of the box. Now this is pretty cool. So we can show it. We can do all the same things we can do on the app, except for this isn't really right because Back to post, it shouldn't have it shouldn't have a back button since you're going back to post. Now I think to fix this, we can use that replace action. So let me show you what I mean. Over here, if we open up our views, go into the post, and then what was it? The uh, post show page. Right here we have a link back to post. And when we click that, it thinks that it's a new visit. But what we really wanted to do is a replace action. So we can add this attribute, data turbo action. And I'm just going to say dot replace. And I'm pretty sure this should do what we want. Let's test it out. So we show it, and then we back to post. Okay, no, it doesn't work. I'm gonna go look this up real quick. Okay, it looks like you're not supposed to add the dot. I don't know why, because I guess I, I've been developing in in Swift and Xcode and usually you do dot. So doing it like this should work. Let's rerun the project. Now hopefully when we do back, no, it looks like it still kept a history. Anyways, we can actually a good thing to do is you might not want to have this back button at all in your app. You might want to have it, and I think we can configure it more. But another option is just to not have it. And 
to do that, let's go back into the scene delegate. And then let's check it out. All right, so what we need to do is right here we're doing, we're saying view controller is equal to visitable view controller. Instead of that, we're going to create our own view controller class that inherits from visitable view controller. So up here next to the navigation controller, we can do similar thing. Private lazy bar view controller equals view controller. Now view controller is actually, well, we already have a view controller. So we're not going to use that name. We're actually going to call it web view controller. So let's create a new Swift file and what do we do? Just web view controller. <laughs> Whoops, I almost called it RB. Um, okay, that's fine. Wait, I actually, okay. I'll need to edit this out. But so after we, so now I need to create a file for this web view controller. So we come up here, click new file going to do a swift file and it's going to be called web view controller now inside web view controller it's going to be similar to this view controller so actually I'm going to make sure I have this I'm going to grab the view controller and I'm going to come over here copy this code and then instead of inheriting from UI view controller it's going to inherit from visible view controller and then we also need to import turbo and we don't need foundation all right I just had to check to make sure everything's right so it looks like the view did load that's correct we can do some other stuff after setup, which something we might want to do is add a tab bar to this. But actually, I think we do that on the navigation controller, or what I mean is the view controller. So one thing we can do is on visible did render did render we can change the title. So one thing we can do is we can do on visible did render, we can change the title of the app. Now what the title is, is this top thing. So you can see it gets it from the URL right now. It gets it from the web page, but instead we can set a custom one. visible must provide URL so actually what happened is okay so what we need to do is we need to update this code here where we're pushing this view controller but what's gonna happen right now is uh, it's just gonna it should work like this so let's take a look Okay, so I know we get this error, visible must provide URL. So what we need to do is we need to set the URL. We can do that right here by saying view controller visible URL equals URL. And then here we're gonna need to push it. But the thing is we, we don't wanna just keep pushing new view controllers. We only wanna do this once. So let's do it up here in the scene function. This, this is basically when it first connects. We can push that view controller and then later we can change the URL and visit. So let's restart the server and see what that looks like. So now when we go to show this post, we don't see any back button because we overrid that controller. Now we have our own. And if we want to add our own sort of UI for a back button, we can do that. This is pretty cool. We can make 
my post. Okay, one thing I noticed I don't like is how when I clicked, it kind of zoomed in. Or I was able to zoom it in. So we can fix that by going on the Rails app side. Go into the layouts, the application. And we need to add right here where we say initial scale. We also need to say max. Uh, let me remember how to do this. Basically had it. So just maximum scale equals one. What this means is you're not going to be able to zoom in on the app, which you might want, but I feel like on a native experience, you don't really want to be able to do that. It feels kind of awkward. So now when you click, it doesn't zoom in. Now we can just make these inputs bigger so it shows up better. Here we have some posts. This is pretty cool. Another thing we can do is add a little tab bar here, but I don't think I'm going to get into it in this episode. I just wanted to show you how you can quickly make a Turbo iOS app and get it running, have this set up. If you want the back button, then you could have left the other controller. But if you want to override that, like I, would, I don't want that back button because I want to have a tab bar at the bottom, then you can create your own other controller to do that like we did. So, yeah, thanks for watching the video. I hope you were able to learn something or get inspired to go and work with Turbo. It's pretty easy to get this set up. Like you saw, I only had to create the project and then replace the code in this file, and it was already working. So that's really exciting. And another thing is Strata just got released today, the date that I'm recording this video. So I want to make some content about that to show you how you can use that in the app and also do some tutorials on how you can make your app better and build different features that are crucial to an app development. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next episode.